Hello, I'm Craig Barton and welcome to this Tips for Teachers Top 5 all about student pair discussion. Now, just as a reminder, this is available both as an audio podcast and also as a video. And if you look below, either in the podcast show notes or the video description on YouTube or on Tips for Teachers, you'll find links so you can access this in both mediums and share it with your colleagues. Okay, so student paired discussions. Now, they're a hallmark of pretty much every lesson that I'm lucky enough to watch. But over the course of the last three years or so, I've been on a bit of a mission to try and find tips from expert practitioners to make student paired discussions as effective and productive as possible. Now, in my Tips for Teachers book, available in all good and evil bookstores, I talk about 15 ideas to improve such paired discussions that I call partner talk. But in this video and podcast, I'm going to share five of my favourite of those ideas with you. So here's the first one. Now, what I often see, and I've done this myself, is teachers ask students a question. They'll put a question on the board or they'll verbalise a question and then they'll say to students, discuss it with your partner. Now, there's two problems with that. First is what happens in the subsequent discussion is the most confident or the highest achieving student or the student who's grasped it the quickest will dominate that conversation because they've got their answer straight away. And they'll be like, I think it's this, this, this and this. And the other student simply won't have a chance to think about their thoughts, to contemplate what they think. And they end up being very passive um, as part of the discussion. Or the other thing that happens uh, whenever you kind of launch straight into a paired discussion is it becomes a very, it doesn't become a conversation, it becomes very much one student speaks whilst the other student, instead of actively listening, is trying to think what they think the answer to that question is. Whereas instead, if you give students some time to think individually first before that paired discussion, both students can arrive at that paired discussion ready to share their thoughts, and also, just as important, ready to listen to their thoughts as their partner. Now, how long to give students? Um, That's obviously going to be dependent on the class, the complexity of the question. It may be a few seconds, it may be 30 seconds. It's also a good idea to give students an opportunity to jot down their thoughts on a mini whiteboard or on a piece of paper to kind of unburden their working memory. So again, they can use that as a prompt to help them make the most out of the subsequent paired discussion. So tip number one, give students enough time to think individually first. Uh, Tip number two, a conversation prompt. Now, again, this is another mistake I've made. I've said to my students, okay, talk to the person next to you, talk to your partner. And I'm almost assuming there that being able to have a positive, productive pair discussion is a really easy skill, but it's not necessarily. Whereas if we can support students by saying, okay, when you discuss with your partner, I want you to say, I think the answer is because something as simple as that just gives a bit of a structure to that paired discussion, make sure that students share both their, what they think the answer is and their reason for it, and it just may help that discussion flow um, a bit quicker. So a conversation prompt, and you'll know yourself for different discussions what different prompts may be needed. Tip number three, this is a big one, you know. Um, Often I've given my students something to discuss and, you know, five seconds later I look at a pair and I say, why aren't you, why aren't you talking to each other? They say, well, we've nothing left to talk about. And when you probe a bit deeper, often it's because they both agree on the same answer and that's it. Okay, well, he thinks that, I think the same, done and dusted. You don't really want that. So what I say to students is this. Use your conversation prompt. I think the answer is because. The other person, I think the answer is because. Now, if your two answers are different, I want you to argue with each other. Who do you think's right? Can you convince the other of your way of thinking? But if your two answers are the same, what's the best explanation you can come up with between you to explain this that would help somebody who doesn't know what the answer is. So just making sure that in both scenarios, students know what they've got to do means that those discussions will benefit as many different students as possible. Tip number four. Now, this is a big one. It's quite hard to get this right, you know. What I've done in the past, it's a load of my mistakes here, right, is I've stopped the paired discussion at the point where it's fizzling out. And I say to students, okay, so I'm listening, I'm listening for that noise level, dip in, dip in, dip in, dip in. And then I say, okay, now let's do either, you know, individual work or what do you think, what do you think, whatever comes after the paired discussion. The problem with that is the energy's gone and you're having to try and pick the students back up again. Whereas if you cut the paired discussion off at the point where the noise level, the kind of enthusiasm, the engagement, when you're sensing it's almost at its peak, 
then whatever happens next, the students are going to take that energy into it, whether it's individual work, whether it's discussions, whatever it may be. Doug Lamar talks about stopping the paired discussion on the crest of the wave, as opposed to letting it crash and burn and then the energy goes. So again, you'll know yourself whether you use the barometer of noise or whether you can just sense it in your kids, but cut those discussions off at their peak or as close to the peak as possible and it'll make whatever comes next much more impactful. And finally, I love this one. So paired discussions are often a, re a rehearsal, a rehearsal either for individual work or maybe a rehearsal for you then to um, choose a few pairs to share their thoughts. But how do you choose which pairs to, to ask? Who are you going to pick? Well, I've got three favourite questions I like to ask that's going to help me decide which pairs I'm going to ask to share their thinking. So the first is this. I'll say, okay, after your pair discussion, okay, quiet everybody. Now put your hand up if you disagree with the answer of your partner. And again, you can be sure then you're going to get two conflicting uh, opinions on something. And that's going to be great for you then to share that with the rest of the class. Who agrees with him? Who agrees with her? And so on and so forth. I also like this one. This is a good one. Put your hand up if you changed your mind during your discussion. Again, that's going to give you such a good insight that you're going to want to share with the rest of the class because a student used to think this and now they've changed their mind. Well, why have they changed their mind? What convinced them? And the thing that convinced them might just be the thing that convinces other students in the class. Or this is a good one as well. Put your hand up if your partner said something you found useful. This is particularly good if you've got students who perhaps lack a bit of confidence, who aren't going to kind of voice it themselves. If their partner says, you know what, I was talking to Emily, she said this and it really made sense for me. That's going to be great for Emily and it's also going to be great for the rest of the class to benefit from that. So being a bit tactical, asking those questions to filter out which uh, groups we're going to choose to hear from, I think can work quite well. So there are five tips for improving student paired discussions. And the thing I always ask teachers to reflect on at this point is which of these do you already do and you don't need to worry about? And which of these do you perhaps not do perhaps as much as you'd like to or maybe you've never done, but you feel are important that you could build into your practice? If you found that useful, as I said, there's a load of other tips about paired discussions and also on pretty much every other aspect of teaching in my Tips for Teachers book. You can get that wherever you buy your books. And also, if you head to the website, tipsforteachers.co.uk, you'll find the Tips for Teachers podcast. You'll find loads of videos um, of tips that you can share in departmental meetings. You'll also find a newsletter that you can subscribe to so you get a tip to try in your classroom every Monday morning. And you'll also find access to all my CPD, both online and in person. Hope you found that useful.